And someone might be like, what, what the heck does that mean? Well, it just means how do I tap into the masculine and feminine energies that exist within me? How do I tap into the religiosity that I grew up with and really see how that has played and shaped my spiritual world today and how I can maybe even incorporate some more of this, but there's things blocking me due to past programming. So I think like, you know, there's all different types of mentors and coaches and teachers that can come into your life. And for me, it plays a huge role. And that's why I've invested into it, even with a coach to go into the spiritual world and Mm -hmm. really to honestly, now at this stage, lead with that in many ways. Of course, my mind, I'm a mental person. I'm in my mind. I create worlds in my mind, but that has cost me a lot of grief and pain. And yes, Mm -hmm. it's got degrees and it, it, it produced all this fruit, but I could have challenged that and done that another way as well. And that's hard to say because the ego is so strong. But I would say that the spiritual part of my life, which is really just coming into science now, science is talking about this. It's really just tapping into this field of possibilities, which is called the Higgs field. New science is now showing this. And some would use a more esoteric term of the divine matrix. But if you really understand and you do your research, you understand where this comes from. And so for Hmm. me, I love really tapping into this because I'm into heart math and heart math is showing the science. They have over 400 peer reviewed studies about the the heart and about the heart has its own nervous system. And so tapping into the heart brain coherence. So we're now showing this through the science. And so it's like, this has been ancient wisdom for thousands, tens of thousands of years, but now science is catching up and it's showing this. So I really like to lead with that, even with businesses I work with. You know, I'm not calling it necessarily meditation. I might say self-regulation to meet them in the language where they're at because, because, you know, that has a lot of stigma, just like mental, the word mental health has a lot of stigma. Addiction Mm -hmm. has a lot of stigma. So meditation has a lot of stigma. So maybe I use the word self-regulation. And so, yeah, I'll kind of digress there. No, I love it. I mean, heart math, tell me a little bit about heart math because, um, um, because I, I agree with everything you're saying. And also I, I sense that there's always someone out there who's like, this is a bunch of hooey fooey. So like, this is something that bridges the gap, right. Uh, between kind of the woo woo, right. <laughs> we might say, and like the hard scientific approach. Mm-hmm. What, what is heart math? Yeah. So like, what is heart math, right? Like, because I'm in heart math and I've taken some of the trainings, I could, I could say it a few different ways what it is. Like one of the ways I heard it said, which is really funny is it's the math of the heart, the math (laughs) of the heart. So it's really interesting. Who would have thought? (laughs) Who would have thought? But, uh, you know, it's really about connecting to the intuitive intelligence of Mm -hmm. the heart and the brain and the thalamus and the way this, this setup works where the, Mm -hmm. the heart actually, where, where this is through science, we're showing that the heart connects more to the brain, the brain connects to the heart. So as we discover these these new ways of tapping into heart intelligence, we start to realize like, oh my God, this is ways that I, these are ways that I can actually reduce stress and anxiety just by getting into personal coherence. And so what is coherence, you know, and that's a big part of heart math is coherence and using HRV monitors, which are blowing up now with aura rings and whoop Mm -hmm. bands and all these things. But um, heart math has their own tools too, like the inner balance. And the M Wave Pro, and it can monitor the coherence levels, which is really monitoring HRV levels. And so I know I might be saying terms that are jargon to some, but you can look this stuff up. It's really becoming really big at this time. So, really, it's about how do I have harmonious and compassionate care for myself? And I can actually do that by creating personal coherence with myself, which is like an optimal state of the heart, the brain, the emotions. Um, being in harmony and in sync. Well, how do I do that? I can do that with my breathing. And then I can buy one of these sensors and see in real time the data that this is actually happening. And then when I then react to a text message with anger, I can watch my HRV scores change. It's really Mm -hmm. interesting. So now we can measure. And so for the skeptics, you can measure to prove it to yourself with these monitors and um, You know, so HeartMath is really just an organization that really started to come around the 90s with Dr. Childre's work, Dr. Roland McCready, Dr. Deborah Rosman and their work. And some people would call them esoteric and out there. And that's okay too, because Mm -hmm. we're watching these new science and studies emerge to be like, whoa, we have to kind of take another look at this, I think. 
Absolutely. I love it, man. And I love the, the approach, right. Of monitoring as well. And I think it's like, when you're able to witness, we all know the feeling, right? We know that our, our nervous system, our breathing is dysregulated when we respond with anger and it's just putting it all into, into practice. And it's uh, some sort of way that the brain can wrap its head around. Uh, you mentioned intuition a few times. It's one of your specialties kind of following your intuition. How does that show up in your life and how can someone get more connected with their intuition in your opinion? Yeah, I mean the, that that also is a as a as a packed word when you say intuition. You know, if I said it to my mom, she thinks it's the devil. But if I say it to someone else, they're like, "Oh yeah, my gut instincts, the way I feel intuitively in my body about something." And a lot of entrepreneurs, like many famous entrepreneurs, talk about intuition and how they trusted their gut before making some of the biggest decisions of their life. And so I think intuition is really just me honoring my body because I'm living in my head most of my life. So my intuition is like this, this connection to my body. It's connection to my, my physical heart, my body. You know, we have adrenal glands. We have all these things that produce serotonin, not just our brain. So we have these other parts of the body that also are systems and, and, and endocrine glands that are connected to this other nervous system that the gut has and the heart has. And so to me, intuition, if we're just talking like, quote unquote, physical body science, like that's what it is, endocrine system and the heart. But the reality is intuition is like why you make certain decisions and you can't explain it every time because it's like, whoa, that was like, some might call it a uh, out of the blue experience or a synchronicity. And some might even call it a God shot or God wing, whatever you want to call it based on what you've learned to call it, to me, intuition is happening every moment of every day. Because when I really open my eyes to new awareness, I start to see things I never could see before. So the intuition is me kind of getting out of my head and allowing it to just like, oh, what, what's going on here in my body? And intuition is, to me, it's connected to the heart brain coherence mm. as well. I love it. And I think, uh, one of my favorite thought leaders is uh, John Verveke. Uh, for the listeners, if you haven't checked out Awakening from the Meaning Crisis, he has some really good stuff on intuition uh, that I would encourage people to check out. He's a professor at the University of Toronto. And I mean, it sounds like what you're talking about is this flow state, right? Like mm -hmm. really like leaning in, listening, not just with your ears, um, not just to the voice inside your head, but like listening with your entire body and then asking like, what does this moment need for me? And then responding, right? <laughs> responding accordingly, um, whether that's your intuition, your conscience, you know, uh, divine intervention, however you want to call it. I think that's beautiful. Um, walk me through, like, you know, one of the one of the things you mentioned is like resilience. You even have a book about breaking through your comfort zone using the power of cold therapy. Uh, I, I wonder to what extent those are those are related, but. You, you seem to be a master of resilience and somebody who's uh, overcome a lot in your life and then now actively seek situations where you can practice resilience. How does resilience show up for you and why is it so important? And then how can someone develop resilience as well?